This tutorial will give you a detailed insight into the functionality when using the Route Creation tool. Start by tapping the Routes button on the main menu. Let's click on the Create Route button found in the top left hand corner of the screen. When we first create a route, you are asked to give it a name. Once your route has a name, you can now get started creating your masterpiece. You have two thumbsticks and a slider near the bottom of the screen. The left thumbstick moves the camera forward, backwards, left and right. The right thumbstick rotates the camera left and right and also tilts the camera up and down around the focal point. The slider that is positioned next to the right thumbstick zooms the camera out to see further in the distance or zooms it in for more detail. The first tab on the right hand side is called the Topology tab. This tab allows you to deform the terrain by raising, lowering, sloping and flattening using the Terrain's Advanced Route Creation tool. There are three basic ways to manipulating the terrain. The first is to raise the terrain with the Height Up tool. Let's start by creating some small mounds on the terrain. Tap the Height Up button and then place your finger on the terrain to start to raise it. You have the option of changing the radius for how much of the terrain you actually affect. By increasing the radius, you see we start to raise a large area of the terrain. Now let's increase the speed at which we raise the terrain by increasing the sensitivity. It would seem our mounds have turned into mountains, so let's lower them. The middle button is the height down button. Tap this button then touch one of your mountains to lower the terrain. The radius and sensitivity applies to this functionality also. Finally, if you want a little more control over lowering and raising the terrain, you can use the Adjust Height button. Tap and drag upwards on the terrain to increase the height or tap and drag downwards to lower the terrain. The more you move your finger in one direction, the greater the effect it will have on the terrain. The radius and sensitivity dials also apply to this functionality. Let's start by tapping the Get Height button, then use the thumbsticks to navigate over the terrain until you get to a raised area of the terrain. As you move around, look at the number next to the Get Height button. It constantly changes as you increase and decrease in height over the terrain where the yellow cursor is. Once you reach an area that has been raised, select the Use Height button and then tap and drag on the terrain. You see that all the terrain you touch will automatically be raised to the height in which your yellow cursor came to rest on when you use the Get Height tool. Look at these steep edges. How will a train ever get up that? Lucky Trains has another tool called Plateau which provides us with the ability to cut down the sharp edges and provide our trains with a nice slope to drive up. Keep in mind the radius and sensitivity work with Use Height and Plateau also. What terrain wouldn't be complete without a little water? You'll see there are three blue buttons in a similar layout as the previous three buttons that were just explained. The first button on the left hand side is called the Add Water button. It adds a water plane on top of our terrain. Once you have the water in the areas you want it, you can use the Adjust Water button to change the height of the water in your layout. If you're not happy with some of the placement of the water, you can simply delete it using the Remove Water button. Keep in mind that the radius dial can be used with adding and removing water. If you're running out of room with your terrain, not to worry. Trains is a feature where you can add additional baseboards to your route. You can find the Add Section button under the Add Water button. Select it and then navigate over to the edge of the terrain and tap the screen where there's no terrain visible to add some more. 
If you have too much room, then you can remove a baseboard by selecting the Delete Section button and tapping the terrain you wish to delete. Once you delete a section of your route, this action cannot be undone, so be careful. As our small tutorial route starts to take shape, it is time to bring some colour and texture to it. On the right hand side, tap on the second tab down to open the paint panel. In this section you will find out everything there is to know about applying textures to your terrain. Let's start by finding a nice grass texture to place around our mountains. Do this by using the slider on the right hand side of the texture list. When you find a grass texture you are happy with, you can tap on the terrain and start to paint. You can also get different variations of the texture by scaling it with the scale dial. You can change the radius of the area in which to paint by using the radius dial. This will allow you to paint small or large amounts of detail using the selected texture. You can look at using the directional dial to rotate the texture to add even more variation to your scene. Another useful tool is the Select Texture button. This button located directly under the directional dial allows you to select any texture on your terrain. There are three reddish buttons at the bottom of the Paint tab. The first is a red square. This button allows us to select an area on the terrain. Once we select the area we want, we can press the Fill button next to the Select Area button. The Fill button will colour the selected area with our currently selected texture. To deselect the Fill Area functionality, use the button on the far right and this will get you back to painting as normal. Let's make our terrain really come to life by adding a few of the many objects Trains has to offer when constructing your route. The Objects tab is the third tab down on the right hand side. Straight away you can see a list of objects and a preview window that displays in 3D the object you have selected. We will start off with finding ourselves a tree to place on the terrain. Tree obviously starts with T and since the list is alphabetically ordered from A to Z, we can simply scroll down to find all the objects starting with T in the list. Alternatively, we have the option of entering the word tree into the search box to show all the object names that contain the word tree in it. Once we find the object we're looking for, we can simply tap on the terrain where we wish to place that object. By default, the Add Object button is selected, making it simple to select and drop objects into the route. Under the Add Object button, you will find the Move Object button. Once selected, this button allows you to tap and drag any object within the route. The next button below Move Object is the Rotate button, which allows you to rotate any object in the route by tapping on the object and dragging left or right. Very handy for creating variations within the routes. This button is the Get Object button. When you select it and tap on any object in the route, it automatically takes you to that item in the list of objects so that you can place more of that kind of object around your route.
The button to the right of the Get Object button is the Delete button. If you are not happy with the object in your route, then you can select this object and then tap on that object in the route to delete it. Very simple. Finally, the button that looks like a house and an arrow facing upwards is the Adjust Height button. When you select this button, it gives you the ability to adjust the height of any object in the route. Now let us jump back to the spline list for a second. You can select a spline object in the list and tap away in your route to create as many different splines as you like. Again, the default button is the Add Spline with the additional buttons that you would recognize already from the objects list being Move Spline, Get Spline, and Delete Spline. Let's make our road exactly the way we want it, but ignore the terrain for now. The Split Spline button allows you to break any spline into two pieces by selecting the button and then tapping on an active section of that particular spline. From here you can move and delete the separated spline objects. In the advanced section at the bottom, you will find some helpful tools. The first button is the Adjust Spline Height button and allows you to tap on an active point on the spline and raise or lower the height of this point. The button next to it is the Delete Spline Point. This button allows you to delete any point within the start and end of the current spline. If you delete too many, you can always add more with the Insert Spline Point button. Now we need to connect the terrain with our road. This is where the handy Flatten Spline tool comes into play. This functionality does two things. It flattens out the spline to make it nice and smooth, and it flattens out the terrain so that the two fit nicely together. The last three buttons on the bottom of the Advanced section starts with the Get Vertex Height. This button gets the height of any active spline point to be used with a button next to it which is called Apply Vertex Height. The Apply Vertex Height button sets any spline point you tap on it to the selected height. Finally, the last button we will talk about in the Objects tab is the Remove Gradient button, which removes any height from the spline point you tap on, putting them flush with the terrain. This is handy in levelling out your spline to fit on your terrain. For more information, visit trainsmobile.com.